write these words. I feel my sanity slipping, as if I'm in the teaser trailer for some fantasy flight game. Each day, the madness comes in like a tide, uh, multiple tides, in fact, of madness. To which point, I feel that I will soon have to throw myself out of the window to rid myself of the thoughts that enter my head at night. Although, that being said, I feel that if I've received so much to my psyche today, my madness has increased so much more than the other person that may or may not be real, I feel that tomorrow I might have less madness, or I might take four points of victory. But alas, I must decide soon. Man, that was dramatic. <laughs> you know what game this is. So Tides of Madness is a two-player card drafting game. Now that concept probably doesn't sound right considering card drafting games you usually need more than two people. Like Seven Wonders for instance, you can have up to seven people or eight if you have the expansion. Seven Wonders Duels gets around this by an interesting mechanic of laying the cards out in some sort of reverse tableau system, but Tides of Madness is different. You truly do draft cards between two people. So. The system is interesting though because it takes a, it's a re-implementation of a game called Tides of Time. Uh, the difference is though is in the title. It's called Tides of Madness. It is a Cthulhu based game because public domain. It's way cheaper. You can do anything Cthulhu that you want and they do it well. So what makes this one different from Tides of Time you ask? Well see the difference is in the name. is in the madness name. Because in Tides of Time you're building a historical system over three different ages. This one, you're simply taking one of your same kind of thing, except you're getting characters like Nyarlathotep and uh, Dagon and Cthulhu and all these different Necronomicons and Miskatonic University, these wonderful locales from the Lovecraftian universe, and you're laying out a tableau over three phases. The difference is certain cards will give you madness, and madness will make you do things that you don't want to do, but you don't know it. <clears throat> what that means is, you'll take a madness token, just like life. And if you have nine madness tokens, you lose the game, instantly. So you could lose based on points, or you could lose based on madness. The last time I played, I lost based on madness. Now, let's take a look inside what Tides of Madness brings to show you kind of how the game plays. different box art than a fantasy for like Cthulhu universe. It's a different artist. <laughs> I love the Arkham Horror stuff, but that's a really good looking Cthulhu. Great little rule book here. I mean, check this thing out. It's it's like a pamphlet. Like you just went to a tour of Miskatonic library and got a pamphlet. Inside of here, it's this mysterious thing here. You get a, it's a score tracker so that you can track your score over three different ages. See, there's the first age, the second age. It doesn't really explain these ages, it just you score three times because, you know, three uh, times happens in whatever. So you score once, score again, score here. You'll notice I lost here before we even got this far because I didn't know how to play the game quite yet and I got a lot of cards with madness. You say, how do you get madness? Well, that's an interesting thing. These wonderful little tokens here are full of madness and you would not understand if these, they give you madness. Or these is what represents your madness, I should say. Um, <laughs> madness. Here are the cards. Oh, and last but not least, a wonderful golf pencil. Oh, and last but not least, a wonderful golf pencil. That was horrible, but thank you. Let's take a look at some of this art. This does not come with it. On the back here, I'm not entirely sure if this is Tides of 
time art or just art. But it's back. It's green, yellow, yay. On the front, you've got things like, ooh, Haster, the king in yellow. Look at that, all right? A little uh, Carcosa. You got uh, the Dreamlands of the Kadesh, whatever. The Great Race of Yith. All these are different cards that do different things. Now, if you know how to play the game, uh, these replace the old structures and things that you do. So I'll show you how it works. Each turn, you'll have a set number of cards in your hand. I believe it's five. You'll look at a card, you'll put it face down, you'll pass it and you'll flip it up and you build up a tableau that looks something like this to where your tableau will say um, on here. It'll look something like this. It'll say this card is a wild suit. Additionally, take one more madness from the opponent. So that is a card that's kind of a pain because it uh, takes a madness from them and gives one to you. Uh, but it can be any one of these suits. So for instance, this is a Eldritch suit. This is a monster suit. I can't remember the names. This is a location suit. And this is a lore suit. I'm sure it's listed here what they're called, but that's not really that important because that's just terminology. Locations, outer gods, great old ones, and manuscripts, and races. All these are different ones. So, for instance, this one says, for each of the... Wow, what is that called again? I just looked at it. For each of the locations... That's not what that is. Wow. For each of the outer gods, I, I guess. The elder things is what this is. For each of this symbol, it doesn't matter. It's each of this symbol, you get three victory points. Well, as you see in this tableau, I would get zero victory points for that because I don't have any of that symbol. Uh, this one says for a majority in green, gain seven victory points. Also, do I have any green? This is a horrible tableau to show you a victory point thing from. Uh, for each suit you don't have, gain three victory points. So we would get uh, three victory points for not having one of these, not having one of these, and that's it, I think there's only five. So we would end up with six victory points. And you'll notice some of these have this squiggly tentacle thing. Oh, and we have the wild suit there. So I'm not entirely sure how the rule would work on that. But anyway, these tentacle things give you a madness. So right now between the Dreamlands and the Great Race of Yith, we would have two madness currently, which you get nine, you lose. And that's it. You keep one card permanently, Let's say we kept that card, so for each suit you don't have gain three, so your goal would to try to not be getting the suits now. And you'll do the same thing, you'll deal more cards out, and every game you play, because of the way the card setup is, you actually won't play with every single card, because you, you don't, in fact, just deal all the cards out. You add to the deck that you didn't choose of any leftovers or something like that, and you play with the rest of them. But that's Tides of Madness. So how is it? That's really the main question. How is this game, Tides of Madness? I mean, the art, first of all, top-notch. It's it's great. Some of the best art I've ever seen in a game. It reminds me of, honestly, why I like Forbidden Island. I love it for the art. The game itself is, you know, it's pandemic light, basically, but the art is amazing. Uh, this reminds me of that. It's just beautiful dreamscapes and landscapes and horrible creatures that don't quite look horrible. They look just amazing. I don't know how to describe it. The art is really just top notch. If you're a Cthulhu fan, you're going to like it just for the art, period. You don't even have to play the game. The art itself is that good. Um, Christian Curla, the designer, you know, you know a little bit about that. Portal games, all that kind of stuff. Plays two people, plays uh, in 20 minutes. I found that to be pretty accurate. This, it has the very great appeal of being an airport game. And by that I mean you can play this on little airport seats with the armrests, you know, those comfortable seats that there's only like 12 of at each gate that have chargers in them. There's a little wider armrest for that. You can play this at the lunch table, at school. You can take this to it, wherever. This is a travel-friendly game, but it gives you the same feel of Seven Wonders. My wife's favorite game is Seven Wonders for some reason. It's a great game, don't get me wrong, but it was probably her first game she ever played hobby-wise. And this gives you that same feel of Seven Wonders of, hey, I'm building my tableau, hey, I'm building my city or whatever it is, and drafting, all that kind of stuff, but it does it with two people. And it's a hard thing to pull that off. I mentioned earlier Seven Wonders Duels. Seven Wonders Duels and this are about the only things that really pull that off in just a fantastic way. I love the theme because I'm a Cthulhu nut. I love anything Lovecraft. So this is just a, you gotta get this game. You've got to play this game. If you're looking for a quick filler game for two people, hands down, just an amazing filler game. I really can't think of anything to knock it for um, right off the bat. Other than it's just hard not to lose by madness sometimes. It takes a little bit of time to develop a strategy there. Uh, I guess the only problem would be it is a two player only game. That's probably the only issue is that you cannot play this game with three or four people. That's not an issue though. If you know you're playing a two player game, it doesn't matter. 
uh, it fits all that criteria of having a short time. You, you really can't go wrong with this thing. If you don't just become enraged and maddened by Tides of Madness, that was so corny. You should just go out and get this game. You should get the game right now. Super cheap. I got it for a very low price. I don't remember what I got it for. I got it from Cool Stuff. It's a super cheap price. You should definitely get it. Uh, Tides of Madness, Lovecraft in a box. Okay, let me knock it on this. The theme doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't. That's why they were able to make Tides of Time into Tides of Madness, because the theme does not matter. Madness, sure, that matters a little bit. You're going insane uh, by collecting Cthulhu. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. If you're playing a 20-minute card game, you know theme is not a heavy thing in this game anyway. So Tides of Madness, not a great theme game, but the theme is great. That You'll understand what I'm saying by that, of course. So should you get it? I think so. I love it. So hey, follow us for more videos at the latest retro on Twitter. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.